Now, I was on Twitter the other day, and I got a couple of people who were really letting me have it because <coughs> I said Merry Christmas. And <laughs> they were really letting me have it because they were arguing about was Jesus really born on December 25th? And one brother said, if you prove it to me, I'll come to church. <laughs> I said, it does not matter. I don't care. I don't care. If there were no snow, if there were no violins playing, if it were not even in the winter, if it were the 15th, 
of July. I don't care when he was born. I care that Being a descendant from a slave, this really resonates with me because my older ancestors, my great grandparents were not sure of their birth dates, not having birth certificates. And sometimes they would get their years mixed up and you weren't sure whether great grandmama was really 102 or 97. It was somewhere in that proximity, but you couldn't even get it right because there were no dates and there were no records. We didn't care what day great grandma was born. We just celebrated that she was born. And we picked a day and we baked a cake and we had a party and she knew that we loved them because it's the love that really matters. As a born again, blood washed, sanctified, spirit filled child of God, you can't stop me from praising God who loved me enough to come where I was arguing about a date or what he wore or what he had on, I don't care. I care that when sin had me shackled and I was bound in bondage, when all hell was breaking loose and I was at my wit's end, when I was suicidal and taking pills and trying to die and nobody understood what it was like to be me, I care that he loved me enough to come where I was and feel my pain and be touched. by the feeling of my infirmity. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Unto us a son is born. Unto us a child is given. Finally, somebody understands my groanings and my moanings and my sign language when my soul is overwhelmed. Somebody understands how I wrestle against my own struggles and weaknesses and temptation. Somebody understands the difference between weakness and wickedness. Somebody understand the groaning and the moaning of my soul. Somebody understand what I didn't get in life, what I didn't have, why I walk crooked, why I stand funny, why my knees buckle, why I'm afraid, why I'm worried, why I'm angry. Somebody understand so when you, I better quit. Woo. When you walk away and won't let me into your little club and isolate me and ignore me and limit me and frustrate me, and we used to have, I can't get no, I can't get no satisfaction, I can't get no understanding, I can't get no sensitivity. When I turn to you and you don't get it, I go to the rock of my salvation, I go to the stone that the builders has rejected. <clears throat> you know why? He's not just the God of the universe. He's not just the ruler of heaven. He's not just the CEOs of the CEO over creation. He is not just the chief administrator over the angels that go to war. He is not just theirs. In fact, he's mine. For unto us, A child is born, and unto us a son is given to the motherless. Stop telling people you had no children, for unto us a son is born. A child is given. This is your baby. 
the baby Jesus. Born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, given to you so that when nobody gets you and nobody understands you, so that when you pour your heart out to people who are calloused and cold and indifferent and cannot be touched by the feeling, not your infirmity, the feeling of your infirmity. He said, I just, I'm not only in touch with what happened to you, I'm in touch with how you feel about what happened to you. <laughs> unto us a son is born unto us a child is given he's yours and nobody can take him he's yours and can't nobody rob you of him and he came because like all good lovers know, if you're gonna stay together with somebody you love, you can't just see love from your side. <laughs> Young couples always argue to prove their point. But people who have been married for years survive because they learn how to see it from the other side. He says, I came so I could see what it's like to be you. Your kinsman redeemer. You cannot redeem what you are not kin to. So as we close this service today, we cannot add nor take away to what Christ did, who he is or what he has become. He was that before I was born and he will be that when I am gone. His word is forever settled in heaven. He is God before there was anybody there to say he was God. We cannot add to him, we cannot diminish him. He is God all by himself, but maybe Maybe, just maybe, we can learn something <laughs> from a baby in a manger. Maybe you might have to leave your perspective long enough to see somebody else's and sit in their seat and feel their pain and imagine what it was like to grow up like they grew up. And maybe you'll stop blaming them for being how they are because they did not get there by themselves. Unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Beverly, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and if you need some peace, he's the Prince of it. He's altogether lovely. He's your joy, your strength, your peace, your wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's your bush burning. He's Ezekiel's wheel turning. He is the seed of Abraham. He is the meek and humble lamb. He is the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is my turtle dove, my trumpet, my peace, my fortress, my bulwark, my mighty God. He is El Shaddai, Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah Sikadu, Jehovah Manah, Jehovah Makadesh. He is my savior, my king, my peace, my deliverer, my bridge over troubled water. He is my healing, my strength, my life, my peace, my shield, my sword, my buckle.
oracle, my defense. He is my lawyer, my attorney. He is my justice. He is my lover, my mother, my father, my sister, my brother. He is the lifter of my head. He is my peace. Whatever you want, whatever you need, whatever you ask, whatever you seek, this man, his name, Jesus. Demons tremble. Jesus, hell gets nervous. Jesus, sickness flees. Jesus, dead men rise up. Jesus, graves open up. Jesus. And if you're looking for a great gift to give him for Christmas, why don't you think about giving your life to him? He knows who you are whose you are, what you did, why you did it, your story, your trauma, your pain. Now the malls have been filled all weekend. Credit cards maxed to capacity. People giving people stuff. But I'm wondering if there's a backslider or center somewhere in this room that wants to give the ultimate Christmas gift. You don't need a credit card. You don't need to park in the back of the mall. You don't need to stand in the line at the cash register. This is already paid for. It's free. Is there one in this room that wants to give Jesus what he really wants for Christmas? Why don't you take all of your sorrows and all of your burdens and all of your problems and Bring them here and give them to Jesus and give them to Jesus because he satisfies. Now you might have your friends with you, you might have your family with you, and you might worry about what they think because they know things about you. They know, but they don't understand. They talk, but they can't fix it. Some people point at you, but they can't set you free. But I know a man from Galilee, if you're in sin, he'll set you free today. I won't worry you with it. I won't frustrate your patience. I didn't get out to bed to get on your nerves. I came to give you something, not to take something from you. I came to give you an opportunity to change your life. Born in a manger for you shed his blood for you. One day he's coming again for you. Will you be ready? I don't know what day that is either. Winter, spring, summer, or fall. But I want to be ready. Whatever day it is, he comes. And if you want to be ready too, why don't you come right now? and give your life to Jesus. Why don't you come right now and give your heart to God? Everybody's standing so nobody has to crawl over you. I'm gonna ask you to give us just two minutes of respect, no moving, no walking. Your turkey's not gonna burn. It's all good. Stand right where you are so nobody has to crawl. And in these few moments, I want every backslider and every sinner and every person who drifted away, and I know you got something where you say you and God got an understanding. No, you don't. If that understanding is not in that word, it is not an understanding. It is an excuse. Get rid of those excuses. Stop making excuses and blaming people and make a decision, the best decision that you could ever make on this Sunday morning, this Christmas Sunday morning. Walk 
down the aisles with your head held up, not caring what people think. Tell them, I don't care, and come and give your life to Jesus right now. Here they come. Somebody clap your hands. Here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Somebody clap your hands. Somebody clap your hands. Here they come. Here they come. Somebody clap your hands. Here they come. Somebody's husband is coming. Somebody's mama's coming to the Lord. Somebody's son is coming to Jesus. Here they come. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Yeah. 